Good day all. I hope you're all safe and sound. Today, I will be uh, uploading my 20th lecture after a span of approximately one and a half to two months as I was also on a sailing assignment. Uh, in due course of time, I have received uh, lots of feedback from my uh, fellow students, my fellow colleagues. If I could upload a lecture on dynamic STS, depicting all different maneuvers which are carried out before the vessels they get married, because remember, for a dynamic STS, it can also be construed, or as per the industrial practice, it is also called getting married. So, coming to the agenda, please do follow me on my YouTube channel under the banner of Marine Quest Solutions. And the subject matter we are talking about is hydrodynamics simplified slash ship handling. So I will be here to cater to your all queries as far as the hydrodynamics and our ship, ship handling matters are concerned. So coming back onto the point board and first I will explain to you right from the basics. Now when I say right from the basics, if you do recall my first two or three, one from first, second and third lectures, I had detailed, I had explained in detail uh, manner the hydrodynamics and the relevance as well as importance of underwater volume of displacement under the heading of hydrodynamics. Now just do bear this in mind as we go through this particular lecture the importance of underwater volume of displacement. Now when we are talking about this particular lecture, lecture number 20 regarding the dynamic STS, remember there is a big vessel which is normally what I marked as, as A, which is a VLCC. A small vessel on the drawing board I marked as B, which is let's say an Aframax tanker. Now, Vessel A is a laden tanker, a laden VLCC. Vessel B, which is a Naframax tanker, is a daughter vessel. Therefore, the vessel A is a mother vessel. Vessel B is a daughter vessel, which is an Aframax tanker. Now, bear in mind during the whole lecture how the underwater volume of displacement acts upon both the vessels. So, I'm going to talk about this in step by step to ensure that you know all the productive things what we talk about here are taken home with you in a very optimistic manner therefore we start with this now here this vessel A what I talked about is a VLCC vessel B in blue is an Aframax tanker now before we go into this whole scenario let's start with the basics which I'm going to talk about which I've jotted it down for you so these things should be borne in mind at all times. Vessel A, which is a VLCC marked over here, it's a deep draft vessel and it is a higher underwater volume of displacement because of our displacement and draft. Number three, remember this vessel, uh, the VLCC, because of our mass into velocity, the momentum is so great that even at a slow speed of three knots or something, you need quite a big of stern thrust to stop her. This is just for information, just for you to remember that when we are doing this STS, the idle speed of getting married or getting united during the dynamic maneuver is approximately three to four, five knots, ideally approximate four odd knots, which both the vessels maintain. The normal range is between three to four knots. Very rarely we try to go to fire because of this particular reason what I just explained to you that is in case of any emergency if the vessels have to be casted off or the operation has to be aborted. So the idle speed of maneuvering is around 3 to 4 knots approximately maybe 4.1 or 2 is within the tolerance limits. And then we come to uh, the we start step by step 
This is the VLCC, which is now proceeding on a, let's say, a northeasterly course. She is proceeding initially, she is proceeding at a speed of approximately six knots. And she has got fenders marked, four fenders marked, uh, rigged up on her starboard side. I have depicted this in the first and in the last diagram so that not to get the, the whole diagram or whole picture or whole maneuver bit claustrophobic. So whatever fenders are here in this diagram or also in diagram number, diagram number two, three, four, five, etc. In five, I've already depicted the diagram that is uh, the fin in this diagram, the fenders, that's where we will talk about how the tire will take place. Now, coming to the A, that is the vessel A, which is the VLCC, she is proceeding at approximate speed of 6 knots and the vessel B. Now, there could be two different ways where one can approach. One is approaching from stern, which personally speaking, I don't find it very productive. So that's the reason I've shown this here, that vessel B, that is in this case, as you can see half the ship over here, is proceeding from an angle of, of approach approximately 45 degrees. At this point of time, she is also proceeding at a speed of 6 to 7 knots. Now remember, vessel A is proceeding this way, vessel B is approaching at an angle of 45 degrees to the, to the approach angle, to the, to the vessel, to the mother vessel. Now, this angle is approximately 45 degrees to the course of the mother vessel. Now, in, in the case number one, that is <coughs> the daughter vessel, which is an Aframax tanker. See, of course, as we know and as we had discussed in my previous lectures, that is number one, two, and three, what are the bow waves and what are the stern waves? And why are they positive? Why the, that is, why the bow waves are positive and the stern waves are negative? which I'll explain in detail in lecture number 1, 2 and 3 respectively. Now coming to this <coughs> particular scenario, the vessel B, Aframax tanker is approaching with an, at an angle of 45 degrees initial approach. The bow waves of course are positive as we see in the diagram number 1 of Aframax tanker that is uh, in, over here. The positive forces are here. The negative are created by this vessel. Now what is happening? This vessel will have a tendency to get attracted. Now the idle dis distance of approach between these two vessels during the first initial maneuver as they are approaching should be approximately one ship's length. That is, if this is the VLCC approaching in this direction and the daughter vessel, in this case the Aframax is approaching, the idle distance should be at least one ship's length of the mother vessel. Otherwise, you will draw very close and the underwater volume of displacement. That is the magical thing which draws. Now, what happens? What I had explained in my first lecture that the underwater volume of displacement, how does it work? Because if I take a hypothesis that let's say everything is stopped. Now, if I pick this vessel, now I'm repeating this lecture number one for you to understand this correctly. Why I'm making this approach? Let's say everything is stopped. This is just to explain you the, the importance of, of underwater volume of displacement. Let's say everything is stopped. I pick up this thing. Again, I'm saying it's a hypothesis for you to understand. If I pick up the ship and keep it on table, let's say water has stopped flowing, everything is stopped. Now, what do you see? A hollow. This hollow will be filled up with the water around in the vicinity. At this point of time, if I take the similar scenario for a for a Af uh, Aframax tanker, let's say here also everything is stopped and I picked up the ship and kept it on this table. Now the hollow of a <coughs> VLCC will be much bigger than the hollow of this vessel. That is nothing but the underwater volume of displacement. Now water will start filling up this void first <coughs> until such time the void of this vessel and this vessel. In other words, the underwater volume of this, this, this and this vessel are equal to this such time she steadies out, this thing will keep on happening. The water is going to keep on filling up into this void of the VLCC because of which this vessel, the Aframax vessel, which is a smaller vessel with a lesser underwater volume of displacement because she is probably in ballast, will have a tendency to get drawn more closer towards the ship. And that is the reason I said the initial approach shall, when you're making, that is, this is the VLCC, this is the Aframax, when you're making initial approach, 
there should be at least one ship's length difference distance bet between the VLCC or the mother vessel and the daughter vessel. When I say one ship's length dif distance should be of the bigger vessels because that's what gives you a clear margin of safety. And if you're more away then maybe in the last maneuver you'll have to come more closer. So this particular calculation is based on the pers personal and the practical and the pragmatic experience what I'm sharing with you all guys. So in case number one this vessel is approaching the mother vessel at an angle of 45 degrees as we see positive negative and negative for, uh, positive on the bow of the of the daughter vessel negative on the stern of the mother vessel <coughs> because of which the bow has a tendency to get closer to this but at the same time that's the reason I kept the speed of transit of this vessel around six six knots and this vessel approximately six to seven knots the idea is being to have a better steerage and better maneuverability that is during the initial phases now at this point of time this vessel is steer is, is making a speed of approximately six to seven knots and this one this one is making a speed of approximate six knots that is the mother vessel now once we come to diagram number one we find a sudden drag of the Aframax daughter vessel towards the mother vessel though she is already proceeding at 6 knots what this will do is this will automatically bring the daughter vessel closer to the mother vessel in other words in further case in, in the next steps as we see how we align her so during phase number 1 and initial phase which is marked as Bravo there is a normal, you will give a starboard helm and keep proceeding at a speed of 6 knots. Now what will happen? There will be a body lateral drag of this vessel as we can see in the diagram number 2. There will be a lateral drag of the Aframax tanker towards the mother vessel because of the, the mantra of underwater volume of displacement what I have just explained and also taught in my lecture number 1 and 2. Case number two, now what happens once we have taken a starboard maneuver, we have fall, we are trying to follow a course parallel to the mother vessel, see what happens. That okay, we have come into this, align the vessel as depicted in figure number two. Yes, plus at the same time we have drawn a little closer to the mother vessel, and that's what we want, but we need to do it this nice as nice and easy and slow and steady. Figure number 3 of the daughter vessel which is depicted in red, figure number 2 of the mother vessel which is over here, what happens? Now at this point of time once we are at figure number 2 of daughter vessel, the speed will be gradually reduced to around 5 knots whereas in case of the mother vessel in, depicted in figure number 2, the speed will be reduced to approximately 3 to 5 knots so that the daughter vessel can gradually nice and easily catch up with the mother vessel at this point of time the mother vessel keeps her course steady and <clears throat> at all times shears are heading with the daughter vessel now this is the critical area where the daughter vessel aligns her speed as well as steadies her course on with respect to the mother vessel so that's what that's the reason I put this with red. This is the critical phase. Now at this point of time, wait, uh, yeah, at this point of time, the, uh, the daughter vessel is aligning her with the mother vessel and proceeding. The speed of the mother vessel is reduced to approximately three to five knots in this case. And as we proceed, by this time, the daughter vessel is aligning herself to the course or parallel to the course of the mother vessel from here from figure number three which is marked in red a critical phase now this time she also drawn closer to the mother vessel we come to figure number four now in this case figure number four what we do is the speeds are equated by such time the daughter vessel is catching up with the mother vessel to come abreast to her approximately because the LOA of the mother vessel is bigger compared to the LOA of the daughter vessel. 
During this time, the speed of the mother vessel, as I said, around three to five knots, and speed of the daughter vessel, she's coping up just to catch up with her because the speed of the mother vessel is reducing and the daughter vessel is still little, little more than the, daughter, uh, than the mother vessel. Now, okay, now in this case, in this case, as we come to figure number four, the transition between figure number four and five, the initial checks are made between the mother and the daughter vessel in facilitation with the mooring master. The initial checklist, the checklist number one, which is prior to the uh, STS checklist number two is checked and the checks white checklist number two are carried out. That is before coming to the, uh, when you're running, before coming into the maneuver. At this point of time in figure number five, which is depicted here, that all the effective checks are carried out between the mother and the daughter vessel, that is between four and five. Now, during this point of time, all the checks, transition, everything is checked and concurred to as per the STS checklist. From figure number five, that is the daughter vessel and figure number three, as what I've depicted over here, that both are coming almost in line with each other, abreast to each other, that is, place where you know the manifold position is to be decided like daughter vessel which manifold she is going to give and mother vessel which manifold she is going to give so speeds are now approximately between three to four knots keeping the uh, the the head steady and of course the thing which we uh, i uh, did not explain it to you earlier is that of course the weather condition has to be calm maximum force for Beaufort force 2 to 3 is very much appreciable. Anything beyond that would be difficult. Anything more than 4 to 5, the operation shall not take place. So, coming to figure number 5, the both the vessels are abreast to each other. Now, from that is mother vessel, the diagram number 3, and the daughter vessel, the diagram number 5. Now, from this point, once all the checks are carried out, initial checks, the speeds are equated, the manifold conditions and everything have been checked, checked with a marker and whatever is placed on the either manifolds. At that point of time, figure number six and figure number four for the mother vessel. Mother vessel, figure number four and daughter vessel, figure number six. Now at this point of time, once the checks and everything are carried out, the line pattern which has to be given first thing will be the head ropes to be given as depicted between figure number seven and eight because again figure number seven are drawn again with red because this is the time both the vessels are coming closer to each other both the vessels are coming closer to each other at this point of time since both the vessels are coming close to each other the mooring pattern is decided and the daughter vessel keeps her mooring line, the head ropes ready, and at the same time the stern ropes ready. But the important, the key to success is once these two vessels are approximately coming abreast to each other, that is figure number five and figure number eight respectively, transition period between six and eight is figure number seven, where all these param parameters are decided, and that's when the final mooring tie up which is discussed has to take place as for the STS checklist I'm not going in detail things of the STS checklist I'm here explaining you the the maneuver how the approach is and the maneuver should be carried out now here the <coughs> important point from the daughter vessel point of view will be that she will be sending her head ropes first preferably three from the daughter vessel and three stern lines from the uh, daughter vessel to the mother vessel. That is three head ropes and three stern lines. Once they are given, now remember, the main thing which has to be avoided during the STS is to reduce, what I am drawing now here, is to reduce this V, which I am just trying to prolong here between these two vessels. We need to reduce this V, of course. This is because of the curvature of the bow and the stem, of course we know that. But we need to bring this V as close as possible and that is the reason we 
shoot out the head ropes of the daughter vessel first and stern ropes of the daughter vessel to the mother vessel once that is done by this time the manifold positioning has also been approximately aligned once that is done these ropes have got some tension and remember during these dynamic maneuvers there is always a load cell which is fitted on the mooring lines so that beyond certain load cell which is described as per the STS guidelines or as per the operator depending on the specific area if the load cell starts increasing then the probably the operation has to be aborted so the load cells are fitted on these mooring lines or are attached on the daughter vessel the load cells are fitted on the daughter vessel in case the the, the 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 tension on the mooring line increases now when you say daughter vessel what actually you may you may ask me that since all the lines are going from the daughter vessel to the mother vessel so how come the load cell is fitted on the daughter vessel and that's where the question comes about the preventer now the preventer lines are fitted with the load cell or the load cell has to be installed these lines are given from the mother vessel to the daughter vessel where the load cells are fitted so coming to the mooring sequence before we do that <clears throat> let me revise this thing again that from figure 6 to 8 the transition period all the lights have been kept ready and ready to be uh, given to the mother vessel the first set of lines to be given are the head ropes from the daughter vessel and stern ropes from the daughter vessel keeping the propeller clear at the same time keeping the head steady and speed constant so both the vessels are abreast to each other and in tandem now once the head ropes are given stern ropes are given at that point of time we align the vessel with the spring lines that is in case the manifold positions are okay that is when the manifold positions are okay as per the speed then the spring lines are given and taught into that situation but at the same time the key to success both the ships should have the same speed they should be proceeding approximately at same speed approximate the tolerances with between 0.2 to 0.3 knots up and down is acceptable and that is where the key point of the load cell which is drawn over here uh, that is the preventer comes so once three stern lines three uh, three headlines three stern lines are given from the daughter vessel and that's when the the uh, springs are given from four, four and a half and thereafter finally the preventers are given this is to monitor the tension between both the ships because these are the first ones which gives you the indication that in case the operations have to be aborted beyond certain tolerance limit as shown in the load cells of the preventer lines which are sent from the mother vessel to the daughter vessel once it is done the last set, last set of lines which are to be given are to be given from the mother vessel to the daughter vessel that is the preventers with the load cell so once we all made fast that's when few more things I'll share with you is that when the hoses are rigged up one thing is to be ensured that the hoses do not get kinked between the vessels and of course the fendering position which I've shown here one two three four which was depicted here also as you can see clearly the fenders are marked here because the importance of this fender is quite a bit which I will explain you in my next lecture subsequent lecture for casting off both the ships and also remember the importance of V this V if this V starts getting prolonged the lines will go or part like a cracker so the important thing is that during this STS maneuver I would rather prefer, uh, prefer, uh, prefer this to be that the wind from the head is not much if it is there it's little because if the wind from the bow increases what it will do it may enhance or prolong the v-shape 
which will make a catastrophic kind of a thing because of the line spotting and that is where again I am emphasizing upon this aspect that the importance of the preventer and the load cell which is installed on these two preventers that is two lines from forward two lines from aft has got a significance. I have explained you right from the beginning like how the vessels are approaching what is the importance of the underwater volume of displacement and how does the smaller vessel gets drawn laterally towards the mother vessel because of the higher underwater volume of displacement as far as the hydrodynamics is concerned and the initial approach why I have taken 45 degrees why I have not taken here like this because if I take a direct approach which normally if you guys take it I'm not denying it what will happen that when you come at this phase your bow will have a tendency to get drawn much closer to the mother vessel therefore it is advisable that when the mother vessel is going on let's say on a northeasterly course you try to follow an angle of approach approximately around 45 degrees to her course once you do that you will nice and easy get attracted towards in this case what I'm depicted with positive and negative but at the same time you're moving and you're giving a helm harder to starboard which is keeping you clear once you are almost in line and coming in the range of the mother vessel you get a lateral drag which will be experienced by the daughter, daughter vessel due to the underwater volume of displacement so I will uh, Finish my lecture over here and if you guys have any doubt please do ask me on my channel Marine Quest Solution where I have also given my mobile number. If you have any doubts, you want to know anything more or you find something else you would like to know more which maybe you find that I might have missed out, I am ready to walk a mile extra. Thank you, thank you all ladies and gentlemen, stay home, stay safe, bye bye.